Hello, my name is Jason, and my name is Albert. Today we're going to show you how Albert and Jason's Funland, a program written entirely in MATLAB, works. When we first started, we played around with the idea of creating a game in MATLAB, as at the time we had just learned ASCII in our NCMP lectures, and realized that along with the use of arrays, we could create a playing field. We wanted a dynamic and interactive game, which would require clearing and redisplaying on the screen at a quick and smooth frequency. Using the CLC function, though, in every while loop would have resulted in an uncontrollable refresh rate. Albert and I then found that MATLAB has a very strong pause function. Pause n, where n is in seconds, would allow us to be able to control the refresh rate. Now that we had known what our approach to the hardest problem would be, we set out to explore different games that we could play. The first idea that came to mind was the game Snake. Since we had both seen Snake on various platforms, we assumed that it would be easy. However, we quickly realized that Snake would require event handling, the program would have to ask at every refresh if the user wanted to change directions, and if not, it would have to continue and keep refreshing. This posed a problem. The input function po in MATLAB pauses the entire program until the enter key is pressed, whereas we needed the program to be continuous. Using the input function meant that the snake would wait on the user's decision, and it became evident that it would be difficult to create a truly dynamic game. Our professor also noticed, notified us that this solution, event handling, was beyond the scope of our course and therefore would put us in the unlimited category. In the end, Albert and I decided to create a program that would run multiple board games. Our finished product had three games, Connect4, Battleship, and Chess, all of which are confined to command window inputs. Both of us had seen games run on ASCII boards before, but we wanted to go beyond that. Through much pain and suffering, late nights and energy drinks, Albert found the perfect solution. The game would first be run using arrays, and a separate function would then convert the array information into a plotted figure consisting of multiple custom images. We will show these later. Testing would first be done on an ASCII template, and then transferred to figure drawing functions for the sake of sanity while debugging. The less steps there are, the easier it is to debug. In the end, the processes of all the games were very similar. First, we would initialize an array to hold information. We would then prompt the, the user for input, for such as moving objects, where to place ships, or selecting where to attack or move. The program then runs and checks the input's validity, and for example, uh, there might be a ship already in the place that the user wants to put in the ship. The program then makes a move, either it shoots or it might uh, move the ch chess piece, and then it checks what has changed. Has a player hit a ship? Then the displaying functions are run to translate the array information into a figure that can be shown to the user. The program then checks if any player has won, and if it has, then it breaks, ends the program, and displays a congratulations to the winning player, and if not, the program runs again. You can select the game that you want to play by um, pressing 1, 2, and 3, and it'll give you a preview from a screenshot from, of gameplay. When you decided on which game to play, you just type in play, and then you're off. Here you can see that you can toggle hints, but that was more in concept, and we were unable to put that into, a, into code. What we were hoping to do is that when one of the players makes an invalid move, we would suggest a valid move for them. Um, then play for chess is very simple. You just type in a move like a2 to a3, and it'll move that pawn for you. And you can also undo moves as well. This game is Battleships. Here we started experimenting with AI, so there's a single player mode as well as a two player mode. Um, you can also toggle difficulty here, and here's just a showcase of the animation that went into that. The gameplay itself is fairly self explanatory as well. Here um, in this menu, you're placing all the ships, and once all the ships are placed, then uh, you just choose squares to fire at. So the first program that we made is an ASCII version of Connect 4, because we just wanted to play around with the displays that MATLAB allowed us to do. Um, how you use this is you enter the column numbers, and it, and it just refreshes every time, basically. And so when you win, we realize we can animate this as well by using the pause n function. This program is Connect4. Here we started experimenting with more complicated and sophisticated AIs. Um, just like in Battleship, you can toggle the difficulty by pressing 3. The, there's instructions, just as usual. And here in single player mode, you can see the hard AI, which places a chip every, every half second. Here you see the hard AI, or the code for the hard AI. Um, basically how it works is, first of all, it checks if it can win right away, and if it can, then it will take that move. And if the opponent can win right away, then it will block that move. How the hard AI is more complicated than the medium and easy AIs is that it will check for traps, which is where there are three chips in a row and two open chips on either end. It also looks two moves in advance if nothing, if nothing is found. And here are just some animations to show how the program checks for wins and traps. Thank you for watching, and again, thank you for hosting this MATLAB contest. Uh, we hoped you were impressed, 